Hello, and welcome to The Revealing. Once again, I'm your host, Pavarotti, and I'm back with my second video explaining exactly what happened in the Idaho 4 case. Once again, this is my opinion. I'm not here to slander anybody, so you may listen and take what you will from what I have to say, but please don't hold me liable. Okay, last time we talked about the two young ladies who were the actual targets in the atrocity. This time, let's talk about why the two young ladies were the targets. If you look at the actual residence, the young lady upstairs and the young lady downstairs, and I don't want to use any names in this, both of those young ladies have a similar circumstance in common. Both of their mothers were arrested on drug charges, pretty serious drug charges, possession with intent to deliver. Now, a possession with intent to deliver charge means that when they were arrested, they had a significant amount of substances on them that was more than their personal use. So, more than likely, they were currying for some type of organization not a cartel this is not a cartel did it scenario but there are many other organizations out there other than cartels and we're going to get into that a little bit further in a later video one of the things that were very apparent is the fact that both of the young ladies mothers had court dates that were coinciding very closely to the actual date that these atrocities happened. The other thing these two young ladies' mothers had in common was the fact that they shared a public defender on both of those cases. Now, both of those public, both of those individuals' public defender was from the same county that the Idaho atrocity occurred in. So that tells us something right there. That means that both of their mothers were active in the drug trade in the same county as the university. So any type of organization that they may have been involved in was actively participating in shenanigans in the area that this happened and the reason that we know that is both of the young ladies shared the same public defender so if they were arrested in different areas then they wouldn't have the same public defender that public defender is obviously working out of the same office now both of their parents let's talk about this for a minute they've got histories as far as arrests they're facing some pretty stiff penalties for possession with intent to deliver, especially not being their first time offense. If those young ladies' mothers were planning on making a deal with, let's say, law enforcement to reduce their sentence, there would be just a few people that would know the details of that. One would be the actual suspects, the mothers. The other would be the law enforcement who is making the deal with them to get the information that they have to be able to pursue other people. And we've already discussed, or we haven't, we haven't discussed, but we've already all heard about you know, the possible investigation from the drug task force that was working on not only catching individuals in the act doing crimes, but also using those individuals to move up the, the ladder to be able to target higher individuals in the drug trade. So if a deal was being made, there is one other person that would absolutely have knowledge of the deal that was being made, and that is the women's attorney. The attorney would know all the details about what information that they were given law enforcement because the attorney would have to structure the actual legal agreement 
between law enforcement and our clients for it to stand up in court. So she would have a lot of information about what was gonna take place as far as ratting on some individuals. And when I say individuals, I'm not talking about, you know, low level people in hotel rooms trying to, to deal to other kids. Like I've heard some of the scenarios that's been talked about. And I'm not talking about a cartel. But there are many other types of organizations, some that are fairly large and fairly powerful, especially in smaller towns that exist today. Those organizations could have many people in it, many wealthy and powerful people, and they control a lot more than the normal people knows that they control when it comes to the drug game. Now, people that are arrested on um, possession with intent to deliver charges can possibly give away a lot of information about that organization's operations. And that would be a no-no to a larger organization. What they would do once they found that out is not necessarily go and eliminate the people that are giving them the information on them, but they would send a strong message for those individuals to shut up. And the strongest me message that they could send would be to take out their kids. So the obvious targeting of these two individuals was a message that was being sent for people to stop talking. And I think law enforcement knows this. They know a lot more about it than you know they're putting out there on the airwaves. And as I'm gonna discuss in a later video, they can't specifically go after that organization, but they do know what's happening. And they probably have the right individual that committed the crimes. And they're doing everything they can to put an end to it with that individual so that no more eyes are put on a larger organization because obviously the drug task force is working on that larger organization and they don't want anything to interfere with that investigation because it's a very important thing to them. So the person that was, the perpetrator that was committing the crimes, they, they had a lot of knowledge about the layout of the house where the young ladies would be. They went in for a target attack on those two specific people. They happened to have people with them that weren't necessarily supposed to be there and they were collateral damage. That's why none of the other young ladies in the home were harmed because they weren't targets of a professional. They weren't targets of a professional. Now, in the next video, we're going to talk a little bit about Mr. Brian Koberger and why he is probably the correct assailant in this case, even though he is the, the hired gun, if you will, and not the only one responsible. And again, we'll discuss that next time.